What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. First of all, I want to say thank you guys so much. You guys know now that we are on Amazon.com. There's a link below in the description box. We literally have doubled sales in the first week. We've been on there three weeks now, and I'm just super excited to be working with Amazon and have the products on Amazon. So thank you guys so much for the support. Again, link in the description box below to the website, BioS3Training.com, which BMR4 is now available. It is back in stock. It's been out of stock for about five weeks now. And of course, Amazon, we're, we're on Amazon, which has two day shipping and free shipping for Amazon Prime members. So thank you guys so much. So this video is literally about something that I have been talking about for the whole time I've been on YouTube. So about eight years now. And I was met with some resistance for quite a while. And then what happened was people started kind of chiming in saying, you know what, actually he's right about this, he's right about that. And that was the hormonal manipulation with food, meaning how hormones, how hormones are affected by the food that you eat. The information that is contained in the food tells your body to do certain things and the way that your body changes by changing hormones in order to get those processes done in your body. Now, I've had people say like a calorie is a calorie and a, a, a carb is a carb and a fat is a fat and a protein is a protein, which is all 100% not true, but they want to dumb it down because they don't understand, right? So they think in the terms of, you know, like, well, I saw this person and they ate this and they got in shape. It's like, well, that is that person. Their genetics may be very good for that. They may actually not even be doing what you think they're doing because a lot of people on social media lie. They're so full of shit. They say they do no cardio. They do two hours a day. They eat 900 grams of carbs. They're eating zero carbs. I've seen so much bullshit go on that people are just full of shit because they want people to react to them, follow them, or think that they're cooler or better than they really are. So they think that's going to give them followers. But the reality is many people out there, myself included, back in the day, Jay Cutler specifically told me that if I wanted to get bigger, faster, and, and grow muscle faster to stick with the clean foods. And I would listen to him talk. Like he'd be telling me, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as I left talking to him, I would literally go to McDonald's and buy some food to eat. Like I was in the whole like, you know, well, Dave Palumbo eats all these cheeseburgers and shit. Well, Dave Palumbo also doesn't have my type of genetics. Well, not that I have Jay's genetics either, but the bottom line is when I was eating all that junk food, it took me, although I was growing and getting bigger, I was putting on a lot more fat. Then I would diet down and I wouldn't have as much muscle as I thought I would. I'm like, how did I put on all this weight in the off season? And, you know, I wasn't getting that much bigger on stage. And then I would go for a while with the cleaner foods and I would make some good gains. And then I would go fall right back off into the dirty box and put on a bunch of weight. And again, when I dieted down, there wasn't that much more muscle in the year before. It wasn't until I really started hammering home those clean foods and my body really started responding. And now at 43, I have to literally make sure that my, my macros are in check or my body literally gains muscle back like that. The muscle memory pulls that muscle right back and it's even faster than it would be than when I was younger and, and the muscle memory would come back. So it's really interesting how the cleaner foods cause a better response. Now, most people just say, well, Jerry, it's not a fucking big deal. It doesn't really matter as long as the calories are in check. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to give you guys proof tonight, which I should have done a long time ago, but it was brought up to me recently. Like some people were saying, hey, I've done all this, this, X, Y, and Z with all these junk foods, I guess you can call them, right? We're going to call them bad foods or dirty foods because fucking IF farmers lose their fucking minds with the goddamn fucking semantics nowadays. You have to be politically correct. Everybody loses their fucking skull. But they're saying, well, I did this, this, and this. When I switched to the cleaner foods because I had a stomach issue, how the fuck did you get a stomach issue? It was the foods that gave them a stomach issue. So I was like, okay, cool. So you, you're eating junk foods, shitty foods that are, you know, very low quality. It gave you stomach issues. His gut biome got fucked up. We'll talk. That's a whole other uh, episode for another day. And eventually he corrected that with, you know, probiotics, prebiotics, digestive enzymes, and eating the cleaner foods. Then his body actually grew better. Yeah, so people, they, they all think it's just a matter of jamming a bunch of calories in your body. You cannot go to the gym, stimulate the muscle, and then force it to grow. You cannot force feed a muscle to grow. Once it's stimulated, it's going to grow at the rate that it grows depending on your genetic makeup. And you can't force feed it. You force feed it, you get fat. That's how that works. No matter what you say, that's just how that works. But you can optimize your gains and fat loss at the same time. Now, the one hormone I want to talk, tonight, talk about tonight, we all know that hormonal manipulation through food happens when we eat a carbohydrate, our body secretes insulin from our pancreas to clear that out of the bloodstream and use it, push into the muscles, push into the liver and use it for energy. It, it, we know that that's how that works, right? So to say that hormonal manipulation from food is not a real thing would be a lie just based on that. Just based on that, that proves my, my explanation of how the body works through the food manipulating hormones. But people go, well, that's just insulin. So I'm like, do I really have to go through? Listen, if you cut fats down too far, your body doesn't produce testosterone properly. So your hormones drop from the testosterone not being produced. Your, your testosterone drops. And guess what? You look softer. 
you look like, you know, you don't put on muscles fast. Your body can't recover. So it's like, in, I can't comprehend how people don't understand this. Like, they'll fight it because they don't want it to be real because they want it to be just so basic that they can be like, well, I know what I'm, I'm an expert. I know what I'm doing. And they can tell the next person because when you really sit down and start really kind of going through questions with them, they don't know the fucking answers. So another hormone tonight we want to talk about that gets manipulated through food in a way that most of you don't know is cortisol. Now, cortisol can absolutely stop your gains and stop fat loss or make it very slow, very hard to gain or lose, to gain muscle or lose body fat. Now, we're going to go through some of the foods and this does not rely on calories. This is not about calories. It's not like, well, if you have this many calories from that, no, this is these foods, not the calorie count. Okay. Not the energy that's in the foods. The, not the calories that are going to be burnt off, not the calories that are going to be stored. We're talking about you eat these foods. These foods have information that tells your body to do a certain thing and change your hormonal structure, which the, the hormone cortisol, we all know is very detrimental for, for muscle building, but most people don't realize it's detrimental for fat loss at the same time. And I mean detrimental meaning that if it's not kept in balance, it changes the way you get results. It could actually just stop things dead in their tracks if it's done the wrong way. So... Number one thing that messes with your cortisol levels is trans fats. Now, I'm going to go on record right now saying probably even the IFOM crowd and the people that just care about calories probably already are not eating trans fats, okay? Everybody knows already that these things are bad, plain and simple. Now, you're going to get some idiots out there that are still going to eat them because they get the matter of fact, they don't fucking care. They, it doesn't get through their thick head. But the trans fats are more carcinogenic. I would say you'd probably worry more about that than your cortisol level. So I think most people stay away from specifically for that reason and not really the cortisol, but vegetable and seed oils, right? Which, get this, you may look, I don't use any vegetable oil, I don't use any seeds. Well, here's the thing. IFYMers use all foods available and many of them like to do things like Pop-Tarts after their workouts, cookies, shit like that. That's where these oils come into play. Um, vegetable and seed oils such as canola, corn, soy, and sunflower, highly processed oils that are heated, washed, and treated with the chemical hexane. Before adding them to chips, cookies, cereals, or bottling as a heart-healthy oil, over-processing strips them of nutrition, contaminates them with toxins. These, also, uh, these oils are also destroyed by oxidization, which is harmful to the body, causing inflammation, activating the hormone system, and altering the stress hormone balance. So just by eating cookies, okay, and I'm not talking about the calories, I'm not talking about the sugar, I'm talking about what is in these that changes the way your body reacts, automatically shows that a cookie is not the same thing as a potato. But we can't argue that fact because people love to argue. But sorry, you guys are fucking dead wrong. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. That's just a fact. You can't make up a truth because you want cookies and make it a fact. That's not how that works. Until the fucking information comes out that these things do not affect your body like that, guess what? They fucking affect your body. So get over it. Fruit juice. This is one that I think a lot of people, and myself included, I used to use fruit juice with um, my diet leading up to 2012 shows that I was doing body healing wise but I always added a fiber to them, which completely changed how this works. But fruit juices, so uh, fruit juice uh, digested frequently associated with increased diabetes and risk and poor metabolic health. This is from fruit juice. Okay, most people think fruit juice is, is good, right? Well, listen, um, uh, the, a state that often leads to an altered cortisol curve and elevated inflammation. Eating fruit is the opposite effect. It reduces diabetes risk. The reason is that the juice removes the fiber that naturally occurs in fruit. Lack of fiber causes a cascade of actions, including elevated cortisol. The sugar in the juice causes a rapid spike in insulin sugar and too much insulin release, which leads to low blood sugar as insulin quickly shuttles the energy from the blood into the cells. Cortisol is released when we feel hungry again, often causing us to overeat. So that's just one thing, just one food that can cause you to overeat and also causes inflammation that you, most people wouldn't even think of, like orange juice, whatever. It's not from concentrated. It's like, even if you fresh squeeze the orange juice, the processed stuff is a lot worse. It's still going to have a different effect than if you ate the orange. Like, it's, it's just that simple, right? Um, chocolate cake. This is one that, it's not just the chocolate cake. It's cupcakes, chocolate cakes. Anything that is not in its purest, like cacao form, is going to cause this response. And I know you're not going to like this, whether it's a chocolate bar, whether it's a fucking cake or cupcake, a muffin, does not matter what it is. Um, it says there, there's different kinds of chocolate cake, but most have an anti, um, most will have antioxidant poor chocolate, antioxidant poor chocolate, and a lot of refined sugar. Foods in high refined sugar are a greater release of cortisol, adrenaline, and epinephrine. Combination that will make you feel great for a few minutes until you crash and your sugar high is over and you just want more. Um, so basically, I mean, they're talking about the sugars up and down, but as this starts to go up, the sugar, and then it drops, the cortisol releases, and at the same time, we don't want that cortisol level high, but. There are those people out there that will say, well, I have cake every day because it's just a carbohydrate and this carbohydrate is, but you're still not gaining fast. 
you're still not losing fat fast. Like you're literally plateauing every other fucking week because you're not optimal. You're not doing the right things with your body hormonally to get the results you want. Your body's not healthy. Whether you think it is or not, it doesn't fucking matter. Whether you have in your head that eating junk food is fine, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you fucking think. Facts are facts and reality is reality. So fuck whatever you think. Pay attention to what the fuck is really going on. Um, we got fat free flavored yogurts. We talk about these likely to contain any live probiotic bacteria. Tend to go too intensive industrial processing, so they're not. Um, they're basically destroying good bacteria in your gut if they don't have those type of um, good bacteria in them. Alcohol. Alcohol increases oxi oxidative stress in the liver. Depresses mood and has been found to raise cortisol, particularly when drunk, after intense exercise. So all of you out there that like to go out to the, uh, the well, first you go to the gym. Oh, I've got to get a gym pump before I go to the club tonight or the bar, right? Got to get my fucking chest pumped up, wear my tight t-shirt out there, look like a fucking knucklehead. Then you go to the bar and you start drinking with your buddies. And sometimes they do that and then they go work out fucking Saturday. And they do that shit again. Like, this is, this is fucking you up and you don't even realize it. A recent study found that when trained men consumed alcohol after a workout, they had elevated cortisol and worse free testosterone to cortisol ratio compared to a placebo group. Long-term use could be even more detrimental because it's associated with even greater hormonal imbalances. So those of you that are out there fucking training and partying and thinking you got fucking your shit together, probably when I looked my worst was when I was out there drinking. When I was younger and I went drinking, I looked my worst. And I was doing everything right. I was eating the clean foods. I was training. My macros are in check. I did my cardio. I still looked the worst that I'd ever looked when I was drinking. So just take it for what it is. I mean, this is my personal anecdotal evidence that goes with what they're saying because I've seen this shit happen to me, myself, clients, friends. 30 years I've been doing this shit. I've seen all this shit happen. Low fiber carbs. This is a pretty good one. So um, carbs that lack fiber can lead to elevated cortisol because they're rapidly digested, leading a greater spike to insulin. Uh, in blood sugar and insulin, which is followed by a cortisol release once blood sugar plummets. Plus, low-fiber diets tend to lead poor gastrointestinal function and inflammation, which alters cortisol balance. Carbs that lack fiber tend to be refined processed foods like bread, cereal, cookies, crackers. These are things that most people say, it's just a carbohydrate. You're not fucking getting it. Like, this is real science. And I'm going to tell you where all this shit came from because these are all in different journals. It's all been published, which means all this information is out there. Why has nobody told you that yet? Why have not all those IFYM people out there those people that only count calories, they don't understand this. And I'm not going to say they're too not smart enough. I'm going to say that they're not open enough to look for the answers of what's really going on. They go, oh, I can have a cookie? Cool. They don't go any further than that. That's like a fucking dog. Like you have the mentality and the smarts of a fucking dog. When it figures out if it goes to take a piss, you give it a cookie. It's the same fucking thing. Oh, carbohydrates or sugar? I can have a cookie. It's the same thing. Like your fucking mentality is a dog. Like don't be a dog. Fucking be smarter than a dog. Some dogs are pretty smart. My dog's pretty smart. Anyways. Um, also, caffeine. All these fucking energy drinks everybody's sucking down. All these pre-workouts everybody's sucking down. Caffeine increases cortisol, which now, if we look at the rate that most of these motherfuckers are building muscle out there, these small motherfuckers that, you know, they keep claiming that they're like hard gainers and shit. Well, the thoughts, you might not be a hard gainer. You might not be doing the shit that you need to do to fucking grow. Like you're half-assing it, doing things that you don't understand, and then you're just like, well, this is just how I am. Bullshit. I've seen people change their bodies drastically when they make a couple little changes and all of a sudden they look like a different person three weeks from now. Why? Because certain things were holding them back. Caffeine. Caffeine, uh, is, it's possible to have a healthy cortisol levels with caffeine use. People who suffer from the effects of the high stress lives can benefit from avoiding caffeine. Most of us have high stress. School, families, business, we're all fucking stressed out. But who the fuck, like, what are you going to sit on a desert island like, oh, everything's cool, man. Now I can drink my fucking caffeine. Like, that's the only person that's not affecting, right? Uh, it says, for example, new caffeine users experience a large cortisol spike that lasts throughout the day. Even habitual users who drink it in the morning and then again at lunch get a big afternoon spike in cortisol, and the effect is worse if you're anxious or mentally stressed. Be wise about your use and know it's having in hormone imbalances or adrenal exhaustion reduces your ability to metabolize caffeine. Certain genotypes have the same problem, which is why so many people out there, it's not just the tolerance, their bodies are having a different reaction to it, not just based on like receptor downgrade and tolerance but their bodies are not able to actually digest and absorb the caffeine properly anymore. So now we have, you know, where do these come from? The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, um, Nutrition Journal 2010, Journal of the Science of Food of Agriculture published in 2012, um, Psycho, Psychoendoneurology, Psychoendoneurology, excuse me, it's a big word, 2013 uh, journal. Um, this one was, uh, it's, trans, it's translated from Russia, but it's like bio something or other, Akima a lot, whatever. Anyways, journal, which was in 2010, we have the Bioma Biomechanical, Biochemical Pharmacology Journal, 2009, 
We have the Men and Nutrition, Men Nutrition and Metabolism Journal, which I didn't know was a fucking real thing. Um, randomized Clinical Trials, Food and Function, based in uh, 2010. Journal of Proteome Research, 2009. And the um, Psychology and Behavior um, Exponential, blah, 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 2013. So this is just some of the places that this stuff has already been published to back up what I'm saying, where people are going to be like, Jerry, you're fucking full of shit. Go look the shit up. Don't ask me for links. Go look the fucking shit up. The problem is you don't look it up. You wait for the person in the talking box like me to tell you. Well, I'm fucking telling you, those are the places where it's at. Go fucking look it up. If you're one of those people out there that fucking are happy with not gaining muscle and you're trying, fuck it. If you're one of those people out there that are happy not losing fat and you're trying, fuck it. If you're frustrated, maybe it's not fucking what you're doing. Maybe it's what you're putting in your body that's holding you back. And let's face facts, guys. You know, training is important, but we know that diet and nutrition is like 85% of the shit that goes on in our fucking industry. We need to make sure we're eating the right things in the right amounts to get our bodies to respond. It's that fucking simple. But most people, even if you're eating the right amounts, don't know what the fuck else is going on with them. So results vary. So this is why many times my clients, when they come to me, they send me everything. I go, oh, fuck, this is gone. That's gone. This is gone. And they go, well, Jerry, I really like. I'm like, I know you really like, but you want the results? Like, this is what you want, right? You're coming to me because you're failing, right? Yeah. Okay. Listen, this is what we're going to do. Okay. And once we do this, just trust me, just do this for the first week. The first week they switch things. Next thing, boom, they get better results in that first week than they have in the last two months. Because it's not about just fitting calories. It's not about just using my fitness pal. It's not about trying to figure out like, well, I can just have one gummy fish today. It's not going to hurt me. Like, what the fuck? Where did the mentality switch from trying to be the best bodybuilder or physique or bikini or figure competitor to I just need to fucking do these competitions but fit in my fucking Swedish fish at the same time? What the fuck? No wonder why everything's fucked up. So hopefully you guys understand now that cortisol, insulin, testosterone, growth hormone, all of these things, glucagon, all of these things, even the um, you know ghrelin and things like that affect your body and how you lose body fat based on the things you're putting in your body. And whatever you put in your body is going to have a, uh, either an adverse re reaction or a favorable reaction. Either way, it's going to have a reaction. There's nothing you put in your body that just doesn't do anything. There's nothing out there that does that. There's always a reaction whether you understand it or know it or not. So be aware, you want the best results. You want the optimal results. You want to do it fast. You want to be the best you can be and stop fucking around like everybody else out there in the pack. You want to lead the pack, you want to be the pack. You want to lead the pack, pay attention to how your body manipulates its hormones through food. And I guarantee fucking tea, you'll be ahead of the pack in fucking no time. But obviously training at gmail.com, leave comments down below, but don't fight. Let's train.com is the blog. It's be there in no time bicep, and we are.